let's get into the nitty gritty. I'm excited to sit down with you, Sarah, and talk about everything going on at Moz. And we'll try to have an interview here where no one gets fired, including you, Cyrus. But uh, uh, it's going to be a fun, interactive discussion. And I'm going to welcome your questions here towards the end of it. I'm also following the tweet stream. So you can just uh, tweet at me at John H. Cook. And I will follow those questions. I've already been soliciting some of those. So if you have a specific question for Sarah, just hit me with it. And I'll be checking my phone for those, uh, for those questions as they come up. Um, but I wanted to just start by kind of looking back about 18 months, if you will. It's been a real tumultuous period at Moz, if you think about it. And a lot of change has happened. You've had uh, a new payment system. Uh, New brand, yeah. three acquisitions. Um, you've really transformed the product in this in this period as well. And of yeah. course, you as the new CEO. So you, you seem to have gotten through a lot in this last 18 month period. And I think a lot of people in this audience would just love to know what's next, what's coming up, and where your where your vision is for taking Moz. Uh, great question. Um, you know, it feels really good to be at Moz right now because we've been working so hard on really big projects, really big investments, and we've learned a ton. And um, speaking for myself, I'm glad to be back in a state of the business where we get to get back to fundamentals in a good way. Getting back to is how is our, is our marketing well targeted? Do we really understand our customer? Are we serving them well? And making incremental improvements. Incremental improvements is such a more fun place to be. It's such a, you can be way more innovative than doing big, big, gigantic, you know, build a data center. That's a long, big process, right? And it's, it's just a big challenge. And rebuilding, um, rebuilding the Moz Pro product into Moz Analytics, that was a huge, huge effort, right? And it took a really long time to get that done. And it's great to have in a place now where we can focus on, OK, we made a lot of progress in getting people's data in one place and getting tracking over time. Now what we want to do is focus on getting the exact right piece of information in front of the exact right person at the moment they need it. So moving away from just all data in one place to what insight does this person need right now to do their job? If I only have you know, you know, five minutes today to look at my Moz dashboard, I want to know the key things that have changed. Because I don't know any marketer that's like, you know what, the one thing I have is lots of time, and I just can't wait to just dig through all this and hope I come up with something interesting and meaningful for me today. So you're going to see a lot of emphasis on driving insights out of the data co we collect. Um, at the same time, we haven't given up on data, because we know we have a long way to go. We, I, I am so passionate about getting everyone the ungettable data getting everyone the ungettable data, and improving the quality, including the breadth of that data, so that we can drive more interesting insights. Yeah, so it seems like more incremental uh, development. You're not going to maybe see as uh, maybe bigger shifts yes. at, at Moz coming, coming up. Yes. So, so what are the projects that Mozers are working on right now that might be maybe those smaller things that are happening that could be interesting to the crowd yeah, here? Great. So um, who's had a chance to actually log on and check out their action dashboard yet, right? So we have a new dashboard. OK, got a couple people. It's, kind of, it's actually pretty dark, yeah. So the action dashboard um, is is the beginning of that sort of incremental improvement into getting insights focused. So this is a very, you know, version one MVP. Let's get it out there. We put a feedback tab right there, and you can toggle back to the old dashboard. And we did that because we wanted to get something out quickly and get feedback from you guys right away. What is useful about it? Where are we hitting on target? And what should we be working on next? But that isn't a set it and forget it, right? It has a new look. Um, it has some new technology, business rules behind it. So that is something that is going to evolve and spread throughout the product, more and more getting that insight layer. Um, so the action dashboard is one that you can start playing around with. Give us that feedback, guys, because we really we are going to use it to drive improvements. Um, you know, another thing I think we've heard a lot, a lot, a lot about content and content optimization, and this is an area that Moz is really, really passionate about. Right? We've got lots of people on the team who are fired up and in investing in content optimization. So you should expect to see us you know, evolving tools in that area in the many months ahead. I'm not going to give any launch dates. I saw something on Twitter about launch dates. Absolutely not. We don't do launch dates anymore. We do incremental improvements and uh, you know, allow us to be agile in building our product. Um, so you'll see that. I, I mentioned before um, our data. I'm really, really proud of domain authority and page authority. And I think that we have um, a, a link index that allows people to do uh, really qualitative analytical work. Uh, but we also want to get more breadth and we want to get fresher links. So we're investing a lot of energy in getting the link index larger and um, fresher as well. And those, those, that's a challenge. 
problems or challenge. Um, so those are a few things off the top of my head. Good, a lot, a lot happening. Yeah. I, I want to transition just briefly into a, a little bit on your background. Um, when we met the other day for coffee, you mentioned that you hate marketing. Yeah. You hate marketing. So it, it, it's a little curious that you're running a marketing software I know. company. What, what the heck's going on there? So I just hate really bad marketing. And so much marketing, especially of my youth, was just really bad, right? Just people forcing stuff down your throat that doesn't even relate to you, that's totally manipulative and predatory. And it makes my experience of the world worse, right? But one of the reasons I'm so passionate about Moz, I'm going to talk about tag fee, too that's related, right? So at Moz, we're very driven by tag fee, our core values. We are transparent, authentic, generous, fun, exceptional, and empathetic. Now, I believe those things. They motivate me. It's what I want Moz to always be, right? It's why I don't want to work anywhere else. And that is true about the kind of marketing I love, right? And what I love about inbound marketing is that when you do it really, really well, it's very tag fee, right? It's transparent. It's not manipulative, right? It's authentic to your brand and your audience. Right, it's very generous. I love marketing that gives me something first, right? That is about sharing, that's about making someone else's life better to build that trust and that relationship that makes me want to give them my money, right? I also, I like fun, so I usually fall for marketing that's a little cheeky. Um, I think you can see that in some of the Moz marketing as well, right? And empathetic, something that's kind to the user, something that the user gets to see when they want to see it, right? And then exceptional, I think that to be really, really great at inbound, your marketing has to stand out. So I hate really bad marketing, and there is so much bad marketing out there, and my hatred of that bad marketing fuels my passion for what we do at Moz, because it's totally caught up in this, like, I just want the world to be a better place that's more tag fee for everyone. And when I'm on the web and when I'm looking for stuff, I want to have that kind of relationship with the various businesses and service providers out there. So will bad marketing always exist? Yeah, yeah, right? I mean, it's easy. I think it will always exist. Will it always be successful? I sure hope not, right? And I think that, I think that um, the people in this room can, um, can testify that, that it is changing, right? That businesses are starting to understand the value of having a relationship with their clients and the value of um, having that direct, authentic brand and being generous first. So I'm very hopeful. I am very optimistic. Technology has enabled us to do so much better personalization that I get to see what's meaningful for me. I, I'm really inspired about the future of marketing. I'm not naive about the future of marketing, though, right? It's always going to be, it's always going to be a battle. Yeah, and so you mentioned tag fee, and having covered Moz for a number of years here in, in the Seattle tech community, it's one thing that's really struck me. There's a, there's a very, very strong corporate culture around Moz, unlike a lot of the startups that I cover. As you get to be a, become a bigger company and now you're running it as CEO, how do you maintain that culture and that spirit as it relates to your employees and your customers and clients? I mean, that is the, that is the, the question that I think about most, right? Because um, building a technology company is all about having great people supporting you. It's a knowledge business. And great people both on my team and great people both in the community, right? So I know that to have the people that I want to work with and that are going to work hard with me and that we're all going to enjoy, I need to have a great culture. Uh, it's absolutely a business imperative to me, and it's a moral imperative to me as a person, right? Um, there's no easy blueprint about how to scale tag fee, and um, you know, at any given time in the company's history, there have been different things we've struggled with at different times. Um, so like, just as a case example, um, transparency, right? Genuine value. And in the early days of Moz, when you have 20 people, transparency is a lot easier because you have more perfect communication more easily. If you want to know what's going on, you probably already know what's going on because we're all in the same room sitting right behind each other. And we're all going to just talk about what we did today, what we want to do tomorrow, and hash it out. Now, when you have a distributed team, um, you know, and, and in the future, when we have different time zones even we're operating in or different languages on the team, right? That, that the challenge of how do you have transparency when communication is so much more challenging, it's, it's a big problem, right? And we've just got to work at it. We've got to adapt. We've got to try new things. Um, and it's a marketing challenge in a way. I like to think of it as like, how do I help the people on my team need to know, or find out what they need to know in the moment they need to know it? So I think about it like that, too. Um, so I don't, I don't have all the answers. I do know that um, you know, it's not something that I alone create and that it's something that's shared. It's something that we as a team co-create every single day, because the culture isn't just about the perks, which obviously I love. Paid, paid vacation forever. Um, 
But it's mostly about, right, how are we going to make this decision today? You know, how good are we doing at making decisions quickly that are informed, but are also somewhat fearless so that we can be truly innovative? And that's just based on, you know, we have 135 people and how they do their work every day. Yeah, well, great. Well, as a journalist covering you, I hope you never get rid of the transparency yeah. <laughs> uh, aspect of it. I wish more companies had that because yeah. it is quite nice to uh, to cover a company that that relishes and and yeah. and, and triumphs uh, triumphs that or, or supports that. So that's really great. Um, so as I mentioned when we were starting starting the talk, you, you kind of came in and took over the company at a real pivotal 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 time and took over from Rand, who obviously put a put a big mark and stamp on the company. So as you transition here over the next two years, what, what's the biggest, what are the biggest challenges or hurdles that you see in front of Moz, and, and how are you going to get over those? So Rand and I have always been great partners. In fact, I'm a huge believer that you can't do anything truly interesting and powerful and impactful in this world alone, right? We just, you can't move a mountain by yourself. You have to have great partners around you. And so Rand's certainly been that for me, and I've learned a lot from him and continue to every day, and that partnership continues. Um, it's, and so what, what got Moz to where we are, right, that I was there with Rand together, and the, um, you know, it's still going to evolve, it is going to change, we are going to be dynamic, um, but it isn't like suddenly, you know, there's a, a new sheriff in town and, and the company is completely different, and I like to joke with people like, we're making waffle irons now, right, just to sort of freak them out for a minute that we're going to go totally off course. Um, but that said, right, there are certain things that in order to scale an organization, right, I'm putting more emphasis on that when we were a smaller company, we didn't have to emphasize as much. Um, and so there's like the dreaded P word, which is process, right? And there's really bad process that you know, suck the soul out of you and your work. And there's good process that theoretically, if it's done well, right, is supposed to enable you to move more quickly and to make better decisions and to have more autonomy, right? So um, I'm more focused on how do I get a large group of people in a complicated business moving more quickly and having ownership while still making sure we're headed in the same direction. So you'll see things like, um, Shifting to, instead of just the E-team making strategic decisions, making sure that we're really leveraging and growing um, our full extended leadership team. Um, you've already heard me talk about making sure we're being incremental in our development. I want to continue that practice um, and get better at it over time. Um, other things, right, keeping, always keeping focused on tag fee and recognizing that as the company gets bigger, I can't just assume that everyone's going to have the skills to be tag fee. Everyone we have has the desire. And I don't think there are a lot of people who show up to work that's like, I just really want to be a jerk and make everyone else's lives miserable and make it very hard for other people to make decisions, right? No one's like that. But having the skills to actually come in and say, how do I lead a very difficult meeting and bring people back to the table where they have diverse viewpoints? I mean, that's a talent and a skill, and you can learn it. So um, you'll see me putting in place a lot of training on leadership and management, uh, because I, I care deeply about the experience of being on the Moz team. And I think that gets reflected back to the community, right? I think that if people are happy in their work, then they're going to be better to the people around them that they work with. So um, hopefully you'll see that continue to grow. Um, you know, other things, I mean, obviously we still love marketing. We still think this is an incredible, incredible field that's changing very quickly, that needs technology to help solve the problems. I mean, I was so inspired by this conference and looking at all the different tools out there and thinking like, wow, we could do that, we should do that, that's awesome, we could bring that together, you know, what would that be like if we paired that with Moz? So we'll continue, um, we'll continue our passion on trying to help marketers do their job better to um, bring integrity to this discipline, to bring um, you know, the customer experience first and be that, be that voice for the white hat inbound marketer. Great. So I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of entrepreneurs out in the crowd that would want to hear from you. You were the eighth employee at Moz, have been part of this journey, the ups and downs. For those that are out there starting their own businesses or projects or tools, what, what sort of advice could you provide to them uh, as they embark on that journey? Gosh, I just hate giving advice because there's all kinds of stuff that worked for me that I wouldn't necessarily advise, right? <laughs> Like, for well, good lessons can come from the things you messed up, you right, know? Well, and, well, and for example, um, so I'm, I was an attorney, right, before I came to work at Moz, and I was the eighth employee, and um, uh, that really has worked well for me, right? What an opportunity for me, and, um, and, you know, I was able to contribute a lot to Moz. But I wouldn't advise anyone, like, you know, on your early team, once you take a round of money, you should really hire one of your best friends who's also an attorney, 
right? Like, I would not give that advice to anyone. At the same time, like, if Brandt and I hadn't had a previous friendship that was really grounded in shared values and a shared perspective on the world, we would not have survived the early years because the early years are hard, right? So if there's a kernel of advice, it might be um, work with people who you trust so, so much that when you are having those disagreements about a, dis a business decision, you can say, you know what? I love this person, and I know they mean well. Let's get back to the table and figure this out, because I know that they are a good person, and I care about this relationship, right? And um, that helps get you through the hard times, and then it just makes that relationship even stronger. So some of my advice, I think, what do you take out of that? Um, resiliency, relationships matter, don't give up, um, be a learner. I've learned a ton, right? There's, I don't think there's any real training that you can go through that really prepares you for running your business because every business is different and there isn't some magical school that suddenly you have all the skills. You have just got, there's no shortcut. You've just got to plow ahead and learn and ask questions and try again and then try something else the next time. And, and hopefully you're heading in the right direction as you go, right? So I have no silver bullets and I'm terrible at advice. Great. Well, we're going to cut to questions here in about five minutes or so, and remember to come up to the mics if you have a, have a question. But I'm also soliciting questions via Twitter, so just tweet at me, John H. Cook, and, uh, and I'll take a, take a look at those. I'm going I'm to go to Twitter for a question right now. This comes from Colin Eggleston, and he is asking, what problems do you face now in internet marketing that you look forward to not having to deal with in the future? Wow, problems in internet marketing I look forward to not having to deal with in the future. Hmm. I'm not sure that I have a problem that I think is suddenly going to go away, right? I mean, I think that things are changing and evolving in the industry, um, but I don't know that that means it will go away in the future. I mean, I think that, I think that um, the improvements that Google has made fighting spam, I think is good for the industry and I think has, has changed some of the dynamics and the tactics that marketers are using. Um, and, and so I think that's, that's good, right? And I think that hopefully in the future we're gonna have to worry less about um, you know, spammy link networks and, and can focus on what, you know, what Will would call RCS, which I think is, is great for the industry. But I don't think that's gonna suddenly happen overnight and I think there's always, there's always going to be new exploits, so. Okay, yeah. good. Well, we'll come back to those. I, um, and remember, we're going to have questions here in a few minutes. Um, the other question I have is the, as the company scales and it gets, gets bigger, uh, and you've touched on this a little bit in terms of just the, the entrepreneurial culture that you're trying to breed within Moz, how, how do you continue to take risks and do new projects and roll out new features and tools? Like, what, what's, what's the strategy for doing that? Because people in the audience will want to know that you're going to continue to innovate and create new and creative, interesting things. So how are you gonna do that as the company gets bigger? Um, there's a lot of different tactics that we work through, right? Um, at, its, at its base, we have to come clean that, that to do something great and to do something innovative, you're gonna fail sometimes and not every project is gonna stick. And I heard that actually, that theme echoed a lot in the um, different marketing initiatives that are presenters, right? You have to try a lot of things because some of them are gonna fail, but you've gotta think big to really be exceptional and be okay with that and you can't punish failure. And then if you really want a truly creative environment, if you punish failure, you are going to stifle that creativity. So from a leadership perspective, from a culture perspective, we have to be willing to say like, okay, let's try it. And if it doesn't work, okay, well, what's the learning from that? And um, now we know, let's try something else. So there's definitely a cultural piece to it. Um, you know, speaking also as an entrepreneur, it really helps to have like good capital so that you can make some investments and have you know, um, if you can failure tolerance built into the way you run your system. So that there's or your business. So there's um, there's that stuff as well. Making sure that you run um, run your company so that you're not putting all your eggs in just one basket, right? But that you're being smart about risk. Um, but you know, fund fundamentally, I think that um, we, we, uh, we as a community inspire each other and it's events like this where new ideas are born, where new partnerships are made, where you spark an interest in me, you spark an interest in my product team, and that is where the creativity and the innovation comes and it's from that collaboration, that listening, the willingness to say crazy ideas and, and let them kind of play out together. So you need that 
creative destruction and innovation within the company to keep it moving forward, and it sounds like you're going to continue to do that. Are there specific tools that you would like to roll into Moz that uh, you're working on or, or would like to share with the audience? <laughs> Gosh, there's a lot of tools that I look at with Envy, right? Um, yeah, I think that there's, I think there's just a lot, of, there's a lot of new great, um, I'm really interested in content optimization, right? I think, I think good SEO has always revolved around great content that is meaningful for people, and so that's just a natural marriage, and I would love to incorporate that. I'm, I was, uh, I'm also really passionate about video, as the web gets increasingly um, diverse in the media, uh, the media that you find in search results, et cetera. And so I was intrigued by, uh, was it Unruly Analytics I saw yesterday? I was like, wow, that sounds really cool, right? I, there's just a lot of stuff like that that I'm, I'm jealous of. I think another theme from this conference that um, has really come through is the, how important targeting is and segmenting and understanding who your user base is. A lot of the presentations were about how important context is. We heard that. So um, that's really got a lot of me just, you know, synapses firing around how do we build the ability to segment um, and provide context inside the tool. And there's a lot of a lot of interesting companies doing that kind of work. So I'm getting a lot of great questions in from Twitter. Um, here's another one: um, Would would Moz uh, accept an acquisition offer if it came your way? Gosh, you know, this is so this is so so. I love my job, guys. I just love my job, and I love working for Moz. And I have a hard time even imagining what is a place I would rather work, right? Because Moz is weird. We are different. We have conversations that other companies don't have because we are serious about tag fee. And it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt sometimes for other people in other companies. And it can be like a rough entry into Moz where you're used to how other companies would think about things, right? Um, and I, I, that's precious to me, and it's more precious than just money, right? So um, I'm focused on I just want to build a really valuable company that provides value to the users, that provides values to my team, and that is um, acting in integrity with our tag fee values. And uh, so it I might be hard to mesh. It's going to be hard. Yeah. I mean, I can. I am totally open, and I can. <laughs> is that a yes or a no? Um, it is a I don't know. And I could imagine a world where maybe there is an acquisition partner who would let us you know, run with what we have um, and, and not meddle with it. But I'm also a realist, right? And that when you join a bigger organization, there is going to be change. So that offer would have to be so amazing. And it would have to be from a company that really doesn't just, doesn't just tolerate tag fee, but that would want to take what we have in tag fee and bring it into their organization in order for me to be like, oh, yeah, let's do it. This is the marriage we've been looking for. Great. We'll keep those questions coming. We might have time, and I'm going to go to the mic here shortly. But before we do, I want to do a quick rapid fire question and answer with you. I'm going to give you one word or a quick phrase, and I want you to respond with a quick uh, one word response or quick phrase. Do I get any passes? We'll give you one. Okay. Well, we'll give you one pass, but hopefully not. Okay. So um, let's start with marketing. Um, tag fee. Okay. Venture capital. Partner. Rand. Oh, I just love that guy. I'm serious, he's like my brother. Lawyers. Ooh. Highs and lows. You are one. I am, recovering, you know, recovering. And are I'm you taking your my, pass on lawyers? No, or? I like, so I like, I like a lot of lawyers. Um, and I've worked with some good ones. Uh, I do think it's interesting that my core group of friends that I went to law school with, only one of them is still practicing law today. Oh. And you know, one of them is a chef, and the other one, you know, she's doing other creative stuff. I mean, it's just, I, I uh, um, lawyers manage risk, and they try to tell you how to avoid risk. And I turns out, I like to understand risk, but I also like to exploit it and take advantage and be courageous. So that's a little bit of a different line of a personality. Alternatively, a lot of um, a lot of lawyers really enjoy the conflict, right? And I enjoy uh, working through problems, which is not the same thing as loving to argue. OK. How about Google? It's OK. This is going to make me really unpopular. But guess what? I actually fucking love Google. I use Gmail constantly. I'm on their calendar all the time. I am searching constantly. I get so much good stuff from Google. So I. I have a hard time being a Google hater because it would make me feel like a hypocrite, right? There is a lot of really, I mean, the stuff they're doing with the self-driving cars, I'm just like, 
wow, I mean, who else is going to do that stuff if not Google, right? I'm really proud of a lot of the work they do. Um, so it's not easy. It's not as simple as like, oh, man, those guys are totally exploiting us, and they're, they're playing with SEOs, and they're ruining small businesses, right? There are definitely practices and policies and sometimes technologies that tick me off. But it's just like, you know, it's almost like people, right? People are complex, and you can love them, and you can love so many things about them, and then have one or two things that you're just like, yeah, but that part really pisses me off. I still love you, and we'll be friends forever, but like that thing you do, dude, I don't dig it. It is not cool, you know? So it's like, you know, it's like family or friends. So I don't know, that, that makes me, um, I think, a little bit unusual in this audience, is I, I have a big, like, wow, Google does cool stuff that I use constantly all day. How about aprons? <laughs> I love my apron. So I used to be a cleaning lady for, um, for several years in college and in high school, and I got in the habit of wearing my, my apron while I cleaned, and it became this sort of like when I go to work, I put on my apron, and then also as a woman, you don't usually have pockets in your clothes. That's changing, right, ladies? Like they're making more and more dresses with pockets. It's changing my life, right? So maybe someday I won't have to have the apron. But for right now, um, the apron is a, a regular part of my work where I'm also really messy. I spill all the time, and dry cleaning is expensive, so you have the little apron, and you have your pocket, you have your cell phone, and you have the pen you need, and maybe you have your notebook. And um, a couple times I've interviewed people for jobs at Moz. It's supposed to be rapid fire. Sorry. All right. but I, was, I like this. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> couple times, I'm learning something new about you. Yeah. So a couple times I've interviewed people at Moz for jobs, and I'll, be, I'll come in to interview them with the apron, and you can just see this expression on their face, like, oh my god, we have to wear aprons if we work there? <laughs> this is a weird place. This is a really <laughs> weird place, right? And it's, um, OK, yeah. we'll move on quickly. Roger? Oh, gosh. I, the first time I saw Roger, 2009, Matt Heilman, our art director had been working on him, on Roger, unbeknownst to the rest of us. We didn't ask for a mascot. He just had inspiration around it, and he put it up on the conference room screen, back in the one that was above the brewery in Capitol Hill. And my heart just melted, and everyone just went, oh, my god. And it just I was like in love immediately, right? And then Scott Willoughby, um, a fantastic contributor at Moz, he's gone on to do other great things. He looked at him, and within 30 seconds, like, his name is Roger. And we were all like, yes. Yes, it is, right? It was just a magical, Roger the magical robot. moment. Very good. Yeah. And let's finish with your favorite swear word in the spirit of James Lipton. I have so many. I'm terrible. I'm F and I'm doing very well right now. Code I think there's only one F-bomb. I am That's doing great. very well, Code of Conduct, yes. ladies. OK. Um, uh, so um, the F word. <laughs> I like that one a lot. Um, Get shit done. I know, I know, but it's in context, right? It's I mean, context in context. So, uh, yeah, I like them. I like them all, except for I don't really like um, body part swear words. Like that's that's a little over the edge. Okay. For everyday well, work. If anyone's up at the mics, it's hard to see out there. If anyone wants to, we got a couple quick minutes here. If we have a question or two, if anyone wants to come to the mic and ask a question for Sarah, otherwise we can uh, go back to the tweet stream. Looks like we have one coming here. Brave souls. Hustle back there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pick someone. I think there's someone. OK, right. we'll pick oh, this there guy. we go. Yeah. Um, hey, has Moz ever considered unbundling some of its products, <laughs> like uh, Follower Wonk or OSE? Are you a plant? <laughs> Who put you up to this? We must have a, a bug in our conference room. No, I'm actually really intrigued by this, right? So something, I, um, something that has really been hitting home for me is what a diverse group we have. What a very diverse audience we have. I mean, there are so many people in this room. And we have, we have a core shared passion, but we also have a lot of things that are different about us, right? And in Moz right now, our sort of strategy has been like, well, put it all in pro, and then they can get everything. Um, and as a marketer, I think that's really challenging to provide the best experience for that particular person. So we've definitely been playing around with ideas of what could it possibly look like for Moz if if we had follower wonk, that was a price point for the people who wanted that and who were just follower wonk power users, which I'm sure there are people in the room because it's an awesome tool. And uh, you know, similarly um, for our other products, right? For Fresh Web Explorer, if you just go nuts about brand tracking, you probably love that tool. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. The content initiative, that's another one we've been talking a lot about. Some people are absolutely going to love this and not care as much about the on-page crawl technical stuff. 
right? And then some people want the whole package, and we want to we want to rethink and explore what could that possibly look like, and what would we have to change internally to make that a success? Because what an interesting marketing challenge, right? To have all these different funnels and different customer experiences, and we've been everyone's been talking about targeting and segmenting and the importance of good customer experience, and that would certainly make it a much richer challenge to have this modularized product. Let's go Thank over you. to this mic. So, uh, whoa. Um, really admire Moz's company culture and tag fee, and I wanted to ask, what advice do you have for leaders who have remote teams and are wanting to maintain a sense of company culture? It's a really great question that I don't know that I'm entirely qualified to answer because my remote, I have, I have several people who do work remote in Washington and we have to fly them up all the time and I have about um, a handful of people in Portland as well right now. So that's the extent of my remote, my remoteness. And I bet if they were in the room and were up here, I think they'd be like, Moz really needs to get better at this because it is very hard for me to communicate and the web conferencing isn't as well set up as it should be. Um, and my understanding from people who are better at it than we are and that we can learn from and improve on is that um, you, everyone in the company, even if you're in the office, has to learn to think like a remote employee. Because it isn't willing, like, it's not willingly excluding anybody. It's sometimes we just forget stuff. Like, oh, yeah, we didn't dial up so-and-so on the web conference line. Or, um, you know, we've underinvested in the conference, web conferencing experience uh, because we're not on the other end of it, right? So um, from, from people who I know who do it well say either it works really well if the whole team is distributed because then by default everyone is used to that level playing field and they will act accordingly. Um, barring that, we have just got to learn to act and think like, what if I was not here right now? How could I have a really rich experience? Um, and then that also goes to, for me, like, um, you know, we've got to get, we've got to remember, and as a marketing company, I think we can do this, um, you, you've got to have multiple channels of communication, right? Because communication is, is just key. It's just key. What are you celebrating? What are you changing? What's going on? It's a big part of how the, co the company functions and culture is distributed. So we've got to hit people um, in multiple ways, right? You have to have the intranet updated. You have to have it on email. You have to have an in-person meeting, a town hall where they can ask questions. You can't just have your message in one place. You need to hit people multiple times and in multiple um, medium. I, and I wish I had more for you, other than don't give up. Okay. Well, good. <laughs> well, thank you. And, and thank you, Sarah Bird, for taking the time to, thank you. to chat with me thank today. You. And, thank you. Thank you, MozCon. Fantastic yeah. to have you here. And back to Cyrus. Thank you. Thank you.